सो हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू दिस न्यू वीडियो सो इन माई प्रीवियस वीडियोज आई हैव डिस्कस्ड विद द कंप्यूटेशनल मॉडल्स अंडर द एम्बेडेड सिस्टम्स एंड वी हैव डिस्कस्ड सिक्स फाइव डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ मॉडल्स सो फर्स्ट इज द इन द लास्ट वीडियो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड विद द सीक्वेंशियल मॉडल ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड मॉडल एंड द कॉन्करेंट प्रोसेस मॉडल देन आफ्टर दैट वी हैव डिस्कस्ड विद द स्टेट ट्रांसिशन मॉडल्स under that we have discussed the finite state models and we have seen a few of the examples for that and many more models we have discussed okay so now in this video we are going to discuss with the embedded firmware design or the software design of the of any embedded system okay so embedded system to be working properly hardware components play a vital role but according but uh, Uh, not only hardware but even the software also plays a very very important role in building any of the embedded systems okay because the hardware parts are just for the working of the embedded system but if you want to include any software to work an embedded system in a certain manner then the software part is very very important the software part if you want to program any embedded system that is if you want to enhance the performance of the embedded system you could be adding some software part to it so that it would be providing outputs based on the inputs provided by the user itself okay it would be dependent on the user if you provide the firmware part so let us see that now the embedded firmware is responsible for controlling the various peripherals as i've told you the controlling part would be uh, very easy if we have if we add any software to an embedded system of the embedded hardware and generating response in accordance with the functional requirements firmware is considered as the master brain of the embedded system okay this is very very important imparting intelligence to an embedded system is one of the one time process and it can be happening at any stage it can be immediately after the fabrication of the embedded hardware or at the later stage okay for most of the embedded products the embedded firmware is stored at a permanent memory that is a permanent memory in the case of any embedded system is mostly used is the rom memory that is the read only memory and they are non alterable by the end users some of the embedded products used in the control and instrumentation domain are adaptive designing embedded firmware requires understanding of the particular embedded product hardware like various components interfacing memory map details input output port details configuration and register details of various hardware chips used and some programming language okay some programming language is required in order to build any of the embedded firmware because the embedded system won't be of the same type it would be of the different categories so the different programming languages also are required to build any embedded system okay not one single programming language is not used we need to be using different programming models embedded firmware development process starts with the conversion of the firmware requirements into a program model okay so what and all are the firmware requirements are there right that should be converted to the program models in order for the development of the embedded firmware okay once the program model is created the next step is to the implementation of the tasks and actions by capturing the model using a language which is understandable by the target processor okay so what whatever language the embedded the system is comfortable using that programming language only you should be uh, enhancing the embedded firmware and you should be building the embedded system okay so these are some of the design approaches of the embedded system which is commonly used okay the two basic uh, approaches are used here that is super loop based approach that is the conventional procedural based design and the embedded os approach that is the operating system approach okay so these are the two very important approaches used in the software part of the embedded system so first let us discuss with the super loop based approach okay so the super loop based firmware development approach is adapted for applications that are not time critical okay they are not time critical in nature and where the response time is not so important it is very similar to that of the conventional procedural programming where the code is executed task by task okay so based on the tasks the code is executed okay for a particular task we write a particular code and uh, if the task if you want to execute that task that code should be executed first after that the code would be executed for the next task okay like this the uh, super loop based approach works the task listed at the top of the program code is executed first and then tasks just below the top are executed after completing the first task okay it is a step by step approach starting from the first task and it goes on okay in a multiple task based system each task is executed in in a serial manner in this approach okay 
the firmware execution flow for this will be uh, in this way i have mentioned here the flow that is the steps in, involved in the super loop approach first is configure the common parameters and perform initialization for various hardware components memory registers first you should be initializing okay then start the first task and execute it the next is execute the second task okay after after the execution of first task then comes the second task then execute the next task and it goes on then execute the last task okay then jump back to the first task and follow the same flow so it's it is a loop right so after completing the last task again you should be coming back to the first task because when an embedded system perform a set of tasks it's turned off then if you want to perform the same task again it is fed back to the first step right so this is the super loop based approach the order in which the task is to be executed are fixed and they are hard coded in the code itself okay also the operation is an infinite loop based approach so it is approach is very very uh, it is infinite it doesn't have any end okay because you see here after executing the last task again it is jump back to the first task okay again it is it is a complete loop here okay we can visualize the operational sequence listed above in terms of a c program here they are mentioned in a c program here okay all the tasks okay void main configuration initialization while all the tasks are executed then it comes back to the loop and this loop goes on okay so here almost all the tasks in embedded applications are non ending and are repeated infinitely throughout this operation okay so hence this is called as a super loop based approach since it is an infinite loop the only way to come out of the loop is either hardware reset or interrupts okay if we have if we have the hardware reset uh, that is if you want to come back of this loop either the hardware component should be spoiled or the or they should be having any interrupt between the tasks then the super loop based approach would be cut and the loop would be breaking okay so these are some of the advantages of this uh, super loop based approach they are mentioned here advantages that is it doesn't require any operating system then it, there is no need for scheduling which task is to be executed and assigning priority to each task the scheduling is not required the priorities are fixed and the other in which the tasks to be executed are also fixed hence the code for performing these tasks will be residing in the code memory so these are some of the advantages and applications of super loop based approach are so this type of design is deployed in low cost embedded products and products where response time is not time critical some embedded products demands this type of approach if some tasks itself are sequential okay so they are they have given some examples here and these are some of the drawbacks they have mentioned here okay so please read all the all of these okay so i won't read it i won't waste my time so this was about the super loop based approach okay so next is embedded operating system approach so uh, as you have seen in the super loop based approach we, it doesn't require any operating system but here let us discuss with the embedded operating system approach where we need some operating system to be executed in order to uh, to be uh, fitted inside any embedded system in order for the working of the system okay the embedded system the, the embedded operating system based approach contains operating system which can be either general purpose operating system or real time operating system to host the users written application firmware okay if you want to host the software part of uh, any embedded system so these uh, operating systems play the vital role the general purpose operating system that is the gpos based design is very similar similar to a conventional pc based application development where the device contains an operating system such as windows unix linux for desktop pcs and you will be creating and running user applications on top of it okay so these are the examples mentioned here please read it so using this uh, general purpose operating systems an embedded product merges the demarcation of embedded systems and general purpose computing systems in terms of the os that is the operating systems for developing applications on top of this os the os supported apis that is the peripheral interfaces assistant peripheral interfaces would be used similar to the different hardware specific drivers os based applications also require driver software okay so the os based applications also they are uh, very important and they require some driver software in order to uh, execute the os inside the embedded system okay so that driver software is very very essential okay so this was about the general purpose now let us see with the real time operating system so this 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 approach is employed in embedded system products demanding 
all the real time response if you want the real time response then we use this uh, real time operating system approach rtos response in a timely and predictable manner to events okay a real time operating system contains this real time kernel which is responsible for performing preemptive multitasking scheduler for tasking uh, tasks multiple threads etc a real time operating system allows flexible scheduling of system resources like cpu and memory and offers some way to communicate between tasks for cel for windows ce psos vxworks threadx and micro cos2 embedded linux symbian etc are some examples for rtos employed in embedded product development okay so these are some of the list of examples under this real time operating system okay so this was the simple approach of the embedded system as operating system so these things and all uh, this notes will be available in the description please go and read it because these are very very important okay so this is not my notes this is provided by the vtu developer site so shout out to them and uh, this notes is very very in a neat manner so that's why i thought to do this uh, that's why i thought to use this in my videos so that's why please uh, read these guys because these are very important concepts what and all i do in my videos are respect are with respect to the syllabus point of view okay whatever whatever is mentioned in your syllabus at that uh, uh, you uh, those are the topics i'm going to cover in the videos any extra or additional topics i'm not i'm not covering because uh, uh, the exams are approaching near and you need some important stuff so so that's why all the important stuff i'm providing with the in the form of videos please watch the videos guys like the videos because the, your like would be very very uh, important to us and it would be motivating us a lot okay and comment down your opinions your opinions matter a lot to us so please comment like share subscribe to our channel share these videos with your friends guys and all the best for the exams okay so we are left with only few videos we are going to cover that in the upcoming videos okay that's all guys thank you